Hey, hey, all you mentees, Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And welcome to your advanced look at the Marvel Zombies Omnibus from Marvel Comics. Of course, I'm talking about the Marvel Zomnibus. So, let's take a look at this new printing. Before going any further, I do want to thank David Gabriel and the fine folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this Zomnibus. So this book is released in direct market and book market on July 4th or 5th, depending on where you get your books. And speaking of direct market, book market, what we're looking at here is your standard edition, the one that's going to be released everywhere in the book market. This is, a, of course, a take on the Secret Wars issue number one cover. And Arthur Sudium is the artist on this. On the left-hand side is your direct market cover, also painted by Arthur Sudam. And that is a take, of course, on Amazing Fantasy number 15. So both of these are drawn by the same artist, or rather painted, but the one on the left is only available at your local comic book store, places like GeographicNovels.com or WaltzComicShop.com, Comics Bugle, In Stock Trades, Tales of Wonder, Dying Breed Collectors, Organic Price Books, places like that. But everything else underneath the dust jacket is the same. So let's take a closer look at this right here. So it is called Marvel's Omnibus. It's not just there. It can be found on the spine. As a matter of fact, this is the way that it shows up on the website so if you're looking at amazon for example you'll be looking up marvel's omnibus i know people keep asking me about the romnibus but i don't know about that one yet that's what uh you know we keep calling it but don't know if it's been approved by hasbro or not but this is a little bit different this is marvel just having fun with this but we've seen the same thing with ven omnibus so yes a take on secret wars number one which is why a lot of us collected these particular books those covers were just so Awesome. They're just zombified versions of the covers, like this right here from Nick Fury by Steranko. And the back of the book right here, featuring all the covers, including the spread covers or the connecting covers from X-Men number one, but of course a take on that. And they're all textless covers. Retail price $125. Parental advisory, mainly due to the ridiculous violence. Underneath the dust jacket, they managed to get the homage, well, most of the homage to X-Men number one. And again, painted by Arthur Sudem. And, oh man, yeah, look at Wolverine's eyes just dripping down. Now, this has been previously collected before in trade paperbacks. This is the third printing of the Omnibus. And, or actually, no, this is the second printing. It's only been printed one other time. And then the way I've collected these is through oversized hardcovers. This is the way that I collected them. And there were, I think there were three of these, and then four and five were not released in oversized format. Or at least I never picked them up. But this has a huge chunk of everything you need, including where all of it got started. And the way that is mapped is chef's kiss. I love it. All right. We're going to crack this open. I'm going to give you the premise of the stories in here. Being that it's an alternate universe, I don't know if I need to say spoilers because it doesn't really affect the 616 or the main universe but just in case minor spoilers if you don't want to know anything about this book and put me on mute just look at the pretty pictures or disturbing pictures all right let's crack this open all right let's go ahead and crack this open you have some green end sheets right here and this picture by Sean Phillips, who worked on the first two books and also worked on The Dead Days, which is kind of a prelude to everything that happens. There's introductions here from Robert Kirkman. Not just one introduction, but the second introduction here. And I love the fact that he signs him Backwoods, Kentucky. I think he moved to Florida after that Walking Dead show took off. Here's what's collected in the book and who worked on each of these particular series or the issues, story arcs, but Kirkman is the one that kicked it off as a miniseries, but this is really the brainchild of Mark Miller and Greg Land, and I'll talk a little bit about what that means and why it's mapped like this. But again, two introductions, and there you have the credits right here. The penciler, the inker, the writers, the colorists, letters, and the editors at the time. So, let's talk about what this collects first. 
So he kicks off with Marvel Zombies Dead Days, which, like I said, sets up the events of Marvel Zombies. Then we have Marvel Apes Prime 8, the number 8, Marvel Zombies Evil Evolution, Ultimate Fantastic Four 21 through 23, and then we have Marvel Zombies 1 through 5 collected in between those, and then Ultimate Fantastic Four 30 through 32. Black Panther 28 through 30, Marvel Zombies 2, 1 through 5, Marvel Zombies Return, 1 through 5, Marvel Zombies 3, 1 through 4, Marvel Zombies 4, 1 through 4, Marvel Zombies 5, 1 through 5, and Marvel Zombies Supreme, 1 through 5. So there is a follow-up, a companion omnibus that comes out, I believe, towards the end of this year or early next year. It's called Marvel's Omnibus Returns, or Marvel Zombies Return. So that's going to have the missing stuff that is not collected in here, with the exception of Marvel Zombies versus the Evil Dead, because, of course, licensing, that was all dynamite and Marvel and can't be reprinted in a Marvel omnibus. So a little bit of the behind the scenes about this, and then we'll talk about the story. So when Marvel created the Ultimate Universe... The powers that be, mainly Bill Jamaz and Joe Quesada, and a few editors, swore up and down that you would never see a crossover between the Ultimate Universe and their 616 counterpart. So you never see Peter Parker 616 with Peter Parker Ultimate Spider-Man. You would never see the Ultimate Fantastic Four meet the Fantastic Four 616. Well, that, <laughs> that was true. For a while. So a lot of people, including myself, that were picking up the Ultimate Comics, thought that the very beginning of a crossover, because the event is called Crossover. Actually, I think it states it all the way here. If you look at Ultimate Fantastic Four, 21 through 23. Okay, this story arc is called Crossover. So a lot of us thought, oh my gosh, Ultimate Reed Richards is talking to 616 Reed Richards. They're going to cross over. Yeah, that wasn't the case. So what turned out to be the case is that he was talking to the zombified version of Reed Richards, and that opened the portal to this Marvel Zombies universe. And then Mark Miller, Greg Land, they were done with that story that ends in a cliffhanger. And I'll talk about the cliffhanger here in a little bit. And in stepped Robert Kirkman, or editors that were like, hey, that story was a lot of fun. Let's just keep going with the series. And we'll give you a mini-series. Five issues. You're the guy that wrote The Walking Dead. I'm sure you can make something up. And sure enough, he did. And that started the whole chain of events that would become the zombie sensation at Marvel Comics. But before we talk about that, what the hell is going on here? We've got Marvel Apes vs. Marvel Zombies with great artwork by Todd Nock. That's exactly what the first crossover is. But this is all done not in publishing order, but in chronological order so again dead days was a one shot that came out after i think it came out after marvel zombies 2 if i'm not mistaken but they have it here at the beginning because it is the beginning of the story then we have the fight with the marvel apes but this is the story i was talking about with ultimate fantastic four number 21 this is the story that sets up the Marvel Zombies. This is when Ultimate Reed Richards, like I mentioned, is talking to what we think is 616 Reed Richards, but it turns out that it's zombie versions of them. So what does that mean? Why are the zombies talking? Well, it's really interesting because in this particular version of zombies, they're not like your stereotypical zombies. It's what makes these characters kind of stand out. It's they're able to retain the memories and the speech of their previous lives. As a matter of fact, the big thing that kind of differs from them and uh, their counterparts, their real-life counterparts, is that they have a constant hunger. So they're always going out to eat, no matter what. And they don't feel anything. It's really weird. Like, they don't feel pain. So if you cut, like, somebody's arm off, they don't really feel it. They know they're supposed to feel something. So they'll mention, like, oh, man, that looks like it could hurt. Uh, but they don't. They don't physically feel it. Now, when you get to reading the Ultimate Fantastic Four, it sets up a big battle with these zombies, and they leave Magneto from this world behind, who is still in his human form, or 
I guess, mutant form, if you will, not turn into a zombie. So it just kind of ends in a cliffhanger for Magneto. When you get to Marvel Zombies 1, it like reads off from there. So if you hadn't read Ultimate Fantastic Four and you're just picking up this miniseries, it can get confusing because my buddy Ben was big into the zombies and he was so confused about Marvel Zombies number one because he's like, wait a minute, I feel like they should have established that Magneto's a hero and he's just fighting the Avengers and Luke Cage and they're trying to eat him. What's going on? So that's where the miniseries kicks off. So here you get to know more about these characters and it's really interesting, like I said, because you're reading about zombie versions of the Avengers and all these other characters. But it's not like most of your stereotypical zombie movies or comics where they can't talk. They actually have dialogue. And they actually have some um, rivalries that still stand from their days of being superheroes in this particular world. So you have members of Asteroid M come down here. Uh, to Earth, to find out what happened to Magneto. They team up with T'Challa, and they're like, wait a minute, something's going on. Where's Magneto? What? And then Galactus comes down, and can he really eat this planet if all these zombies are eating everything? So yeah, the Acolytes team up in a really weird team up with T'Challa from this particular world. You have Forge from this world, and they're trying to cure what's remaining of Earth. Then we have more of the Ultimate Fantastic Four storyline in here that features the return back to that particular uh, planet with the zombies, not planet, the universe. I do love the way that these are collected in here, by the way, because after that story of the ending of Marvel Zombies 1, kind of ends on another cliffhanger, and the cliffhanger is dealt with not in the Ultimate Fantastic Four pages, but in the Black Panther pages that are collected in here. So now we have, finally, the Marvel Zombies coming into the 616 universe. So in a way, they kind of crossed over between the Ultimate Universe and the 616 universe, if the ties that bind them all together are the Marvel Zombies. But then, like I said, years later, of course, we had Spider-Man and books like that. So... Marvel Zombies continued. Robert Kirkman wrote the first two volumes and Dead Days. And then we had Fred Van Lente. But when Fred Van Lente comes in and does Marvel Zombies 3, 4, and 5, he kind of does his own thing. There's a little bit of a retcon as to what's happened to this world. And it's a little bit different than what Robert Kirkman was setting up. Robert Kirkman, as ridiculous as some of the rules were, did set some rules up. And then Fred Van Lente kind of went back and retconned a little bit of those rules. Not by much, but you'll see what I mean when you read uh, through these pages. But it always has some kind of remaining team, some recognizable characters fighting off against the opposing forces that happen to be zombified versions of characters. It is interesting, too, like going back to even Marvel Zombies 1, like the costumes they're wearing are all over the place. Like, you can't, or maybe it's just me, that I can't establish a direct timeline this would have been. Because they called Captain America Colonel America, and you see Luke Cage wearing his 70s outfit and pre-Archangel Angel there. But I wouldn't say they're like 80s characters. I don't know. Uh, maybe I had way too much fun uh, trying to decide who was who. What I liked about Fred Van Lente series is that he brings back characters like Machine Man. Uh, he brings back obscure monster characters like Man-Thing. There's uh, Howard the Duck that shows up through here. And yes, even Deadpool gets in for some of the fun. But that's what it, I enjoyed about the last part of this book. Are the obscure monster characters that nobody was really using at Marvel Comics. And Van Lente was like, hey, let me have a crack at some of these characters. And man, does he. Giving you the pitch of the first story arc and second story arc kind of... Gives you the pitch of the whole thing, really. This is the cloning of the Squadron Supreme story. All right, so let's talk about the way the covers are collected, because I'm sure you noticed towards the front of the book, we have, like, little articles written by uh, the artist. So you kick it off with Dead Days. Here, let me just show you. Let's go to Marvel Zombies 1, for example. So with Marvel Zombies 1, we had a bunch of variant covers. They're not full splash pages. They're just framed right here. 
and they give you a story behind the scenes how he was able to do this, which one was the hardest one to paint, to recreate, and they give you the original cover that it's based on. That's really cool. Really wish these were done in splash pages, because even in the oversized hardcovers, when you kick off the story arcs, or in between chapters, there are no covers. The covers are just held all the way in the back, and done in a splash page format. Kind of wish they had done that. Not to say that there's no covers that aren't splash pages, because later on, I mean, there's not really a story within a story doing the covers. So you get the full splash page, of course, as a take on Evil Dead. And then the back matter. The back matter is just Arthur Sudam just having a blast doing homage covers to all these classic covers. Anywhere from the Silver Age, there's a little bit of Golden Age in there. There's some obscure covers. But, and it's just not him that's doing it. There's a couple of other artists that join in on the fun. There's a lot of Deadpool, Merc with a Mouth variant covers. So, yes, a lot of these are variant covers that are all the way in the back. The main covers are done in between the chapters. So, there was a whole zombie month where every comic had a zombie variant cover. Not just by Sudan, but other artists as well. These are collected back here in thumbnail, and then you have some original art in thumbnails. Really interesting that they're collecting the Tales of the Zombie covers, because the character does appear through these pages, but these are just the covers. And then the covers to the reprints right there, and homage covers, and then the end sheets back here. This book has 1,200 pages. Let's check out this binding. And here is that eye. That eye. Love seeing that. 1,200 pages, sewn binding, big, beautiful eye. This one printed at the Mega printer. So it's not the iMac. It's not the Donley printer. The paper stock seems honestly as thick as the Donley printers have been lately and the iMac printers. However, there's no bleed through happening, at least from, of course, it's mostly really dark. But let's see here. Yeah, let me try to find like light colors like this. There's no bleed through happening from the other page. I'm trying to find some white pages. Aha. Perfect. So here. Yeah, I got nothing. Let me see what's on the other side. Eh, that was a bad example because, well, I don't know. I mean, you should still be able to see things bleed through. Aha. Perfect. All the way in the back. This homage to Spider Girl. It's really, I mean, even if I hold it up like, th maybe if I hold it up like that, right up against the light, you can see some bleed through. But laying down, I, can't, I don't see anything. Yeah. So, mileage may vary. You might find some pages if you're looking for it, but I didn't notice any bleed through. Maybe minor bleed through, but I mean, you notice that with all books. The way the book lays over, though, is really nice. That eye helps a ton, so there's no real gutter loss at all so this is the latest printing i know the original printing had the bad binding issues i don't have it i had my oversized hardcovers as a matter of fact let's um i wanted to show how well this omnibus lays over because of that eye and the sewn binding don't hardly get any gutter loss compared to my deluxe edition that has some major gutter loss right there so they want to do a little comparison there but that's it. That, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this omnibus, don't forget to check out our sponsors. If you're in Europe and you're interested in buying these books, definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices, flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all EU countries, emails answer within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. 
And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this omnibus. Sorry, Zomnibus, how dare I? Leave your comments down below. If you have questions, leave them down below. If you are picking this up, if you're going to pick up the companion Omnibus that comes out later this year, or I think might have been moved to early next year. But anyway, leave those comments down below. If you have any questions, you know where to put that. Everyone, stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.